I called the file example file so that we can uh, just, um, you know, flip around in it, have a look at it. I want to explain what you're looking at and the type of, of uh, project that we're dealing with. Okay, first of all, this is a small home project. There aren't very many professionals in it. There are children, the homeowner. There's uh, fence material. That's a resource. And other types of resources that we'll talk about a little bit later. If you remember in Bill's presentation of last week, you can turn on project summary tasks. And I've done that here. So you can see that this is my home, land, my home landscaping project. Also, there are some indenting and outdenting. And if you remember, those are actually or kind of represent a work breakdown structure. Numbering to the left is simply the outline number or WBS number internal to this project. Notice that the project does have resources. You can see them off to the right-hand edge of each bar, of each Gantt chart bar. So you can see that there's resources here. Now, setting a project start date, this, this information is all well and fine, but quite often we have to actually set a project start date later, after the data is in or after the initial data is in. And the location for that is in the project information. You get there by selecting project, project information. The Project information dialog box has some uh, some incredibly important features and can affect the project dramatically. The start date field is the starting point for project in terms of calculating your project, this project. So we can type a date in if we know it, or we can type a month in. We can. We can essentially pick from a drop-down. Now, I selected February 1st for the start of this project, even though the current date is the 27th of January. You can set your start date to be in the past. You can set it to be in the future. Oftentimes, we get a project, and we're still in the defining mode. And so even though the project started a month, two months, a quarter ago, we have to uh, figure out where we're going to have that e essential project start date. And the rule of thumb here is you start a project when you start actually developing it. So if you're trying to capture the cost of planning and capture the cost of defining, then your start date might be earlier than the actual work to create the deliverable, what it might, whatever that might be. The third field down is schedule from. This tells project whether it should schedule from the start to the finish of the project based on sequencing and based on any constraints that might be in the project. This is the default in the tool, and I heartily recommend that you leave it at project start date. When project is scheduling from the beginning, it tries to schedule tasks to start as soon as they possibly can. There is another setting, and that's uh, to go from the project finish date. I don't recommend that you start off using the, the finish date of the project as your calculation. Now, the reason why is that if you're calculating from the finish date, tasks are calculated to start and finish as late as they possibly can. So this second feature, the second option, is going to give you less flexibility than the previous option. Best practice, especially if we're, we're early in our usage of this tool, use the project start date as your launch point. In uh, uh, aeronautics and space, they quite often use the finish date and calculating from the finish date so that they know the latest dates so that they can establish tasks in order to make their launches or to make their tests on the airframes. Some call it drop-dead scheduling. 
I call it as late as possible and not necessarily a good thing when we're trying to, to be efficient. The 30-second report you heard me mention is in the project statistics, and that's at the very bottom of this dialog box. If I press statistics, it only takes a second for a project to calculate the various fields and tell me very quickly whether or not what my current dates are, what my baseline dates might be, and stay tuned for that. That will actually be next week where you'll hear more on setting baselines and how we might use those. Apparently there's no actual start, there's no, and, you know, it's in the future so that makes sense, and no variance, meaning difference between the start and finish dates and what we wanted to do in the baseline. So this is comparisons that are happening very quickly inside this tool. In the bottom portion of, the, of this uh, quick report, we're seeing the current state of the project in terms of duration and work and cost. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is the lower left-hand corner. Project keeps track of schedule completion as well as work completion. And so you can get a very quick clue here of how you're doing by comparing those two uh, uh, with each other. Project statistics, uh, one of the fastest and most effective and efficient tools within Microsoft Project. I'm going to close it. And I would like to return to project information. If you recall, I went to the project menu and I chose project information. There's a couple of last things I'd like to point out here in this dialogue. And the first is, notice on the right-hand side that there is a calendar. There's a project calendar. That is the basis for calculations in Microsoft Project. So when you're establishing your start date, if you uh, are using different calendars in your organization, here's a great time to do a double check and make sure that you're using the correct project calendar. And then last but not least, there's the current date. That will automatically try to be the current date, whatever it might be. But often, we schedule reports to uh, a specific date, to a status date, or to a different date. So these two fields, the current date and the status date, can be adjusted. I would encourage you to ensure that the current date is correct, that it hasn't been overwritten and that the status date uh, initially says NA. And that may change over the course of a project. More on that next week in session three.